The feature that everyone's going to get excited about in the June of 2024 Game Maker update is going to be depth buffer axis, because deferred rendering is something that gets people excited. But there is something that has been added as a, um, I guess you could say a side effect of surface depth buffer axis, which I think is actually just as interesting, if not more interesting, and probably has the potential to affect way more game maker projects out there than surface depth buffer access can, because for being honest, most people who use this engine aren't really interested in manipulating the depth buffer like that. But if you've ever wanted to create a mask so that you can mask out uh, different parts of a graphic, parts of your UI, if you've ever wanted to clip drawn text without having to do weird stuff with a shader or surfaces, then the stencil buffer is something that might interest you. So. Uh, right now, test projects, blank screen, checkerboard background, uh, that's fine. I've got in this project a sprite of everyone's favorite Yo-Yo Games employee, uh, Gapreet Mathuru Singh, uh, pointing at something off in the distance. And I've also got this, uh, this, this Game Maker logo with the center punched out that we're going to be using as our mask. So, uh, let's start by just draw a sprite tiled. Uh, our sprite can be SPR underscore math or uh, sprite image can be zero, uh, drawn at zero, zero. And that's gonna get us um, math or tiled across the screen. If you want it to go way overboard with things, because I do like going way overboard with things, uh, we can we can draw a couple versions of the sprite offset from each other. And this will give us uh, a bunch of math on the screen all pointing at stuff in the distance, tiled on the screen like that. Um, Let's uh, let's stagger them a little bit better. Actually, that's about the same because they're they're overlapping each other. Anyway, let's say that you then wanted to um, take uh, the game maker logo, and you wanted to use this as a mask or as a stencil, and you wanted to only draw uh, mathers in the region of the uh, the game maker logo that is cut out here. If you've ever played with stencils as a kid. or I guess in my case, as an adult, uh, you can probably guess what the stencil buffer is going to be used for. And uh, I'm going to rearrange this code a little bit. I'm going to uh, comment out the sprites of math are being drawn and I'm going to move the logo to the top. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is end up with something that looks a bit like this. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to just have the math is being drawn in the center of the Game Maker logo and everything else is going to be basically cut out as if you were like using a paintbrush. Uh, over a stencil shaped like the Game Maker logo. And we're going to use the stencil buffer for that. So let's, um, actually no, first I'm going to say draw clear stencil. I'm going to clear the stencil buffer to a value of zero. Um, this is one of several new draw clear related functions that have been added to Game Maker in the most recent update, which will allow us to clear not only color and color plus alpha, but also depth uh, the stencil buffer and any combination of those four things that you care about, uh, color, alpha, depth, or stencil. The stencil buffer, by the way, if anyone was wondering why this was tacked on here, um, depth buffers in 3D uh, graphic system tend to come in uh, 24 bits of depth and 8 bits of stencil, so they tend to come together. And all that happened when Patrick Crafe added uh, access to the depth buffer in Game Maker is that he also added access to the stencil buffer at the same time. And um, there's a whole bunch of uh, there's a whole bunch of functions that relate to the stencil buffer. And honestly, a lot of them, what they do isn't obvious by looking at the name. Fortunately, they are all documented by Feather. So if you uh, if you have Feather enabled and you mouse over each of these functions, you'll see a little bit of um, a little description. You can also just go in like the OpenGL documentation to to look up pretty much all of these because these are pretty much just a straight clone of the OpenGL stencil functions. Some of them might have a slightly different name or uh, some of them might be uh, combined together in the OpenGL documentation. But anyway, uh, I'm going to want to first enable this. GPU set stencil enable, we can set that to true. Uh, by default, GameMaker will not do any stencil testing because by default you probably don't care about stencil testing, uh, only when you're doing weird effects like this. I'm going to disable it when we're done. So to make this work, I'm going to need a few things. Uh, one thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need 
um, basically the depth and or stencil information about this logo sprite to be written to the stencil buffer, uh, but not the actual color. And um, I forget if I said this earlier, I'm going to treat the sprite like solid regions are going to be a, um, solid regions in the sprite are going to write some value to the stencil buffer. I'm just going to make it a one. And um, the clear region, the transparent region, that's going to be discarded. That's not going to write anything to the stencil buffer. It's going to stay zero, which it was initialized to up here. So to do this, I'm going to need two things. I'm going to need to be able to draw, or I guess you could say three things. I'm going to need to be able to uh, draw the sprite, but not have its color or alpha information actually written. I'm going to need to discard uh, transparent regions of the sprite so that they're not written to the depth and or stencil buffers. And I'm going to need regions that survive, uh, regions that aren't uh, cut out by the alpha testing, to write a certain value to the stencil buffer. So uh, let's start with that last one. Uh, I'm going to say GPU set uh, stencil write mask. Uh, the way that the stencil buffer works is that it's going to take uh, an 8-bit value that you can that you can write to the buffer with and that you can uh, read from and that you can do all kinds of fun uh, binary arithmetic on, but I'm not going to do any of that now. I'm just going to set this to 1. So uh, parts of the sprite that survive that don't get discarded uh, with alpha testing are going to have a 1 written to the stencil buffer. Uh, I'm going to want to GPU set stencil pass. And this is going to need to be a, um, a stencil operation. I'm going to say stencil op replace. So the uh, opaque regions of the sprite are going to uh, replace uh, the existing value in the stencil buffer with our stencil write mask um, so that we can actually discard uh, transparent regions of the sprite. Uh, you probably know what this is going to look like. GPU set alpha test enable. I'm going to set that to true. Uh, GPU set alpha test ref value is going to be 127. So any pixel in this sprite that has alpha of less than 50% is going to be discarded. Uh, we can re-enable this when we're done, or re or re-disable this when we're done drawing the logo so that it doesn't carry over into other things that we draw. And uh, as for disabling actual writing of the actual color of the sprite, we can say GPU set color write enable, and we can disable uh, writing of the red, green, blue, and alpha channels of that sprite so that this uh, this sprite is going to have its information written to the depth and or stencil buffers, but it's not going to be written to the actual visible uh, part of the surface. And of course, when we're done with that, we can re-enable all of those because uh, when you were not creating stencil -like stencils like this, we would like to actually have our color information. Okay, so that is going to set up our uh, our actual stencil uh, buffer. So when we when we run the game like this, we're not going to see anything, but the information is there in the stencil buffer. Unfortunately, I don't know of any really great way to visualize what's in the stencil buffer. Like if you were to grab the uh, depth texture and sample from it in a shader, I'm not actually sure how to get the stencil information out of that. But anyway, uh, to use it uh, later on is quite simple. So if I were to um, come down a little bit and say, uh, let's um, GPU set stencil ref. Uh, let's start with that. I'm going to set GPU set stencil ref to 1. Uh, you can think of this as alpha testing, but for stencils. So we're going to compare, um, we're going to compare the GPU set stencil read mask, which I'm also going to set to 1, uh, to the value that is already in the stencil buffer. Hey. Uh, I'll also, and this won't directly have anything to do with uh, the stencil test operation, but let's also set, what is it, GPU set stencil write mask. Uh, if I set this to 0 so that uh, we don't write anything to the stencil buffer after this, what is it? If I um, change the stencil pass function to uh, stencil op keep. Uh, this will prevent the stencil values of anything that we draw after this to be uh, written to the stencil buffer, which we don't really want because it'll interfere. And um, what's the last one I want? GPU set stencil function. This is going to take a compare function. Uh, compare functions actually have been part of GameMaker before. This is not a new addition. Uh, you might have seen these if you did anything especially weird with the uh, with with depth testing. I never really saw a use for that, but um, 
Nevertheless, we have a couple different compare functions. Uh, we can say compare function always equal greater, greater equal less, less equal never, or not equal. I'm going to go with not equal here. So if we read a value out of the stencil buffer and compare it to our reference value, um, if the value in the stencil buffer is not equal to the reference value, then uh, we are going to keep the fragment and we're going to draw it. Uh, otherwise, we're going to discard the fragment and we're not and we're not going to draw it. So now, if I were to comment out uh, this block of Matthew down there, and if I were to uh, run the game, assuming everything went correctly, which it looks like it did, uh, we now have we now have Matthew being drawn uh, over this game maker logo, but only in the um, like only in the in the actual G part. And this would apply to anything that you wanted to draw after this. So like if you wanted to like draw, I don't know, draw draw a colored circle, like let's say 400, 400 with a radius of like 250. Uh, let's say an inner color of like C underscore Let's say a red and white circle um, on top of the mattress here. We can see that we have our, um, our circle that we're drawing uh, also being clipped out with this G here. Uh, you could use this for whatever you want, text, sprites, stuff in 3D space. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I am personally looking forward to using this to clip text on the UI so that we can have um, text that like stays in a, in a particular box. And if it like would overflow the bounds of that box, it's just, it's just going to get clipped off. Uh, previously, I used a service for that. It was kind of a pain. Um, I believe a lot of other people, or at least a handful of other people, are thinking of using this for something similar. Um, I believe you can use this for portals in 3D. I'm not going to get into how you would do that now, but you can use the stencil buffer to clip out uh, regions of space, like for a portal, and like mask out the view through through a portal in 3D space uh, like this. There's a few fun things you can do. Now, I think I mentioned earlier that the stencil mask is an 8-bit value, and uh, we're not actually just using ones and zeros here, so like trues and falses, stencil values, and whatnot. Um, the stencil buffer does contain an 8-bit mask, and if you wanted to really go advanced with this, you could um, put different binary values in the stencil buffer. You could put different binary values in the reference value, the read mask, and you could use different operations uh, for the compare function. And you could effectively have multiple, um, multiple stencil masks going at the same time. But for the sake of simplicity, I only need uh, basically a true or false state for the stencil buffer right now, so I'm just using a, a 1 and a zero, and I'm not going any any farther than that. But, well, if you really want to go down that rabbit hole, and if you really want to have like multiple stencil uh, masks working in parallel, uh, you're totally allowed to do that. But you, you probably will have to reason through um, what exactly you use for your masks and your reference values uh, if you do that, because that gets a lot more complicated than just using a uh, basically a true or false state very quickly. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. Uh, I hope this video came out okay, because this was like my fourth time recording it, and I think I finally got a version of it that I liked. Uh, if you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of the video. Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I like posting videos on the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, so if anything like this appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Uh, you should all go check out the Steam page for WizardX, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to that can be found down below as well. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Black Alien for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.